Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Gabriela Cabero, the CEO and co-founder of Casebeer. Uh, very excited to be here with all of you. So first off, some uh, housekeeping. Go ahead and navigate to the bottom right of your screen. There's a chat box. There's an area to put in questions. So uh, feel free to tell us uh, where you're joining us from. I'm located in beautiful Orange County, California. And uh, I know we have people coming in from all over the country. So very excited to be here with you guys today to uh, talk to you about some of my favorite features. So some of you joining us are clients of Casebeer already, but for those of you that are not, allow me to share a little bit about Casebeer and, uh, and why we built it to begin with. So we built this practice management software specifically for personal injury law firms because law firms like yours have a lot of unique needs. You track insurance information, medical treatment, settlement negotiations. And while other law firms bill clients for their work that they're doing, a lot of times they bill even ahead of time, personal injury law firms take on massive risk every day to serve people who desperately need representation. I personally love working with PI law firms and their staff. And we at Casebeer deeply understand the needs of PI-focused law firms, and it's why we're consistently the number one rated case management software for personal injury law. So today, we're talking about five ways that Casebeer will make this your best year yet. Now, um, whether you are here because you think you may not be using Casebeer to its full potential, and I'm sure there's some of you guys out there, um, or you're just curious about how Casebeer maybe could improve your practice, I'm really excited to talk about these features because they're some of my favorite ones. And I know just like me, many of you are making goals for yourself or did make goals for yourself for this year. And I'm really excited to introduce you to these features and making sure that we're going to help you make this year your best year yet. So let's go ahead and get started. So number one, I'm sorry, I didn't save the best for last. This is one of my absolute favorite features, and it's the high value case report. So let's talk about uh, how case beer can help you drive more value for your firm and your clients. So this happens at firms across the country. How many times have you had a very promising case that didn't get flagged early enough? Maybe the client didn't treat fully for their injuries, or maybe they didn't go to treatment regularly and you didn't notice right away. Even the most diligent firms, this happens at, right? So uh, we knew this problem, and that's why we built the High Value Cases Report. So I really ask you today to stop leaving money on the table. And I know that all of you do what you do to protect your clients and to deliver the best possible results for them. And so that's why Casebeer now automatically aggregates the cases that we flag as the highest potential value or that you flag before you even put a lot of data in there as highest potential value. And this list updates in real time as your attorneys and staff are working and adding data to cases. So for those of you joining, you might be clicking over right now, unfolding your report section. If you don't see that report in there, it is permission based. Um, but, uh, but it is also a newer feature. So I want to make sure that you're utilizing it at your firm if you're not. Be sure to ask uh, people if they are and be the one to introduce it uh, if you are already a Casebeer customer. Now, when I like to talk about this report, I always think it's really important to underscore that every single one of your clients is important and will be managed effectively with Casebeer, right? But it's also very essential to identify big cases early. So you can monitor progress. Maybe you build in a couple extra follow-ups on those cases. You make sure that those injuries are properly evaluated and they're being you know, referred out to the right specialists by their doctors. And even that you're bringing in the right collaborators like experts or specialized litigators before it's too late. 
right? And here on the screen, you can see a couple of the factors that we look at when we're flagging something as high value. Um, wrongful deaths, really high medical bills, uh, public or federal entities, um, obviously significant third party policy limits or UM limits, or again, you have the ability to flag your own cases because maybe a case comes in and intake catastrophic injuries. You don't have medical bill information yet. You don't have policy limit information yet, but you want that intake attorney or person to flag that case. You can always uncheck it later, but you also want to encourage them to flag those potential high value cases early. And then you can see here too, we also obviously let you track or enter in a currently estimated value on cases. And so on cases where you do have that, you can also use that toggle bar to filter out those cases, which is really cool. And most firms that start to use this report regularly also begin to encourage attorneys working those files to enter in those estimated values. There's a lot of really cool data that you can get out of that. So I talk to a lot of lawyers all around the country, and one of my favorite questions to ask them is if they can list their top five cases. And you'd be surprised, honestly, how many can't. And for those of you joining me today that are paralegals or case assistants, um, you should know what your top five cases are. right? And it's not because not all of your clients are important, but again, these are the clients that you want to make sure that you'll drive the highest possible value for them and, of course, for the firm, right? So these attorneys are very good at what they do, but it's simply because they don't have the right tools, right? So you should be able to sort cases by policy limits, by medical bills, by estimated case value. And these features are built into case fear. So I want to make sure that you know they're there and that you're using them. And if you're not using Case Beer currently, um, you should be able to do this in your current software. Or if you're not, I do encourage you to take a look. Um, so again, before we move on to the next number two favorite feature of mine, and that's going to help make 2023 great, um, High Value Cases Report is new. So make sure to check it out and, uh, and start using it and building that into your practice if you're not using it already. All right. That takes us to number two, demand and offer tracking. So settlement negotiations, of course. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at negotiations tracking in Case Beer and a little bit about what that's about. So Case Beer's negotiation tools are unrivaled for maximizing results and understanding where everything is at your firm. You can track pending demands and offers. You can differentiate between third party and first party negotiations. You'll see notifications for expiring demands and be able to sort by those. And I'll show you one of those reports soon. Obviously you have accountability and transparency and you have adjuster and defense attorney and insurance contact histories. And I'm gonna talk about contact histories a little bit later in more detail. Now, um, I, uh, I always like to uh, show the settlement management screen. If I'm at a conference, I have attorneys walk by. And when Case Beer was very new, I'll never forget showing this report to a senior managing partner at a law firm and they got so excited. They're like, wow, I can pull up the settlement management screen. I can filter by an attorney. I can see what they have in their pipeline. I can see if they're following up on offers and demands in a timely fashion. And then their associate attorney walked by and he saw this screen and he blanched because he thought, oh my gosh, you know, maybe I've got my cases that I'm saving to make sure that I make my quota next month. Or maybe I'm not following up on that case the way I should be. Whatever that is, that transparency is key. So you make sure that you and your team are driving together to ensure the best possible results. Following up on negotiations in a timely fashion, knowing how much money is on the table, and also escalating problems. You can see here on the screen that we have a note field. This is one of my favorite components of our negotiations tracking. So if you're a case for your customer currently and you're not utilizing this, let me give you an example. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, 
the least efficient way to communicate is, you know, especially if you're in an office, getting up, walking over to the office, you see someone's on the phone, but maybe you're messaging them or you're emailing them, whatever your internal communication looks like. Um, uh, your manager, your the firm owner, they might be pulling up this report and they might see uh, that the offer, the initial offer is really low. But the latest offer on the table is really low compared to the total meds. Maybe you know the policy limits. And if you don't have a note in this field, that supervisor, whether they're you know a, a managing partner or owner, they're going to look for a note to understand why. If they don't see that, now they're going over to you and it's creating a conversation. And also, if you're an attorney that's managing, you know, 20, 50 negotiations at once, that note field is going to help you keep track of where things are at in the negotiation process as well. Because as much as you can memorize and keep everything in your head, those notes and keeping everything and everyone on the same page is good for you and good for the law firm. Um, I also really love this note field for when uh, demands fall into the issues category. So we track offers from they've been demanded, we have an offer in, here's the latest offer on a case, and now maybe a case is settled, but you're not going to see that money right away. So, for example, that might be um, that might be something like uh, miners comp, uh, miners comp, right? It's going to go to court. It might be a missing client that you can't get a hold of to sign off on the release, but you've secured policy limits. There's nowhere else to go. So, these issues are going to give somebody the peace of mind to understand why there's a hundred thousand dollars in fees, for example, in the screen we're looking at, sitting there and not coming into the firm right away versus the money pending. Um, for those of you that are firm owners today too, I'll highlight, this is a screen that some of our customers have printed out and taken to a bank to get a business loan. A lot of banks don't understand the nature of the PI business. You're not a, um, you know, a, a defense firm or a commercial litigation firm that can go and say, look at all this client trust money I have that I'm working and billing against, right? You have value in your firm and in your cases, but it's really hard for them to understand and wrap their head around the pipeline. And so this is another way that uh, that you can utilize this tool. So if you're looking potentially to uh, to take on investment and grow your business, making sure that you're tracking these settlement negotiations in a really diligent way will help you with that as well. Uh, just a little bit of a focus here on what that pipeline can look like. Checks in this month, checks in this year. You can filter by teams, by attorneys. If you have our uh, functionality for filtering also by office, you will have that insight if you're a firm that needs that level of, uh, of management. All right. Number three, historical performance insights. Um, and I just want a quick reminder, there is the question box, chat box. If you have questions that come up, I'll try to answer them as we go. Or, of course, I'll make sure to allocate time to that at the end. So historical performance is really important, right? Um, we all have a sense of this. So we may not be utilizing it to its full potential. So how can you get better if you don't learn from your wins and your mistakes, right? Now, some of you are probably sports fans. I'm not one, but I know statistics are really important and go into a lot of things when players are being traded or, or bought. So um, let's, uh, let's talk about relationships in your firm, right? Every relationship has the potential to help or hurt your case. That's why Case Beer comes with really deep contact history. So you can aggregate and benefit from your shared knowledge and experience of your firm. One attorney's experience can help drive better performance on the next time we're working with that insurance adjuster or with that, um, with that uh, litigation attorney. So with one click, wherever you are in a case, whatever you might be touching, you can pull up your firm's history with a medical provider, an insurance adjuster, judge, and more. And for those of you that are already Case Beer customers, some of you may be using this all the time. And I bet there's some of you that aren't using this enough. 
And so that's why I like to talk about this feature. So um, the other key thing too, is when you're looking up those histories, the statistics and performance will be relevant to the contact type. And of course, we want you to help you keep your data insights clean. And that's why we've built in the ability to merge duplicate contacts. And again, that is something that firm administrators can do or people with specific permissions can do. It's not just anyone that can go in and merge contacts. But if you are someone that feels like you do have a lot of those contacts in there, connect with your firm administrator or uh, office manager that can potentially help work and clean up that data. That way you make sure that you don't have two medical providers that are exactly the same aggregating data. You want to bring those together and making sure that you're capitalizing on the data that your firm has. Um, history is leverage, right? So most firms uh, I speak with, they end up relying on their memory or their gut, or maybe the memory of their longest standing paralegal, right? They're like, oh, don't work with that doctor. Back, you know, three years ago, we had a problem and the client didn't like them. And we all have people like that, that we rely on, right? In our businesses or in our law firms. Now, I actually believe that trusting your gut is really important. Trusting your memory is okay, but trusting the data is the best option. Right. So having insights really allows you to negotiate from a position of strength. So, for example, if you have a lien or a letter of protection that your firm wants to reduce for a client, imagine if you could come into that conversation knowing how much you paid that doctor over the last year on all the different cases that you guys have worked together on and what their average fee reduction has been. This knowledge makes negotiations faster easier and helps you nurture better relationships. And the piece that's most important when we're talking about data and stats is that insurance companies know your stats. They know how your firm performs. They know how often you go and litigate cases. They know what they've paid you out on last 10 cases and what you're willing to take on a case, even if it might be worth more. So it's time that you know your stats against them, and that you start using that data against them as well. I do have an example here pulled up of a provider history, so you can get a kind of sense of what that looks like. You can see at the top here, we've got money paid, how much money that has been paid from the law firm uh, client trust account to this provider, what the average is per case, their average reduction, right? How many cases they've had or how many clients of yours that they've treated. So again, really valuable insights to have. And in Case Fear, we have contacts, again, judges, attorneys, everything. So um, and it, it is very important too to know that one attorney's experience, one case assistance experience, you wanna gather that, you wanna note that, on these contacts so that next time someone's working with an adjuster or a judge or um, you know a counselor it's really nice to have that information in there and uh, and that you're you're going to benefit from it as a team so let's talk about client satisfaction or creating happy clients as i like to call it so happy clients are really good for business I know you know this, right? Your clients are your customers and we're all consumers of something. So we know that the value of being surprisingly great is a lot better than being just okay, right? Um, your happy clients are going to be your least expensive source of future leads. They can help drive growth and positive reviews and testimonials, right? Uh, for those of you that are case assistants or paralegals joining us today, uh, there's nothing that feels better than having a happy client shout out your name uh, on a Yelp review, for example, or a Google review, because not only does that drive value for the business, but it, it, it sure feels really good. And, you know, maybe, you know, you get a gift card to go out to dinner or something like that. So um, 
Let's see. Um, by the way, with slides, we had someone ask, uh, there'll be a recording of this. So happy to happy to share. And if you have any follow ups or want any more uh, information, I'll be happy to share that with you. Um, so great, uh, great question. So KSpear has a lot of different features to ensure that you're going to surprise and delight your clients with your service beyond just delivering the best possible results, which, of course, we talked about some of those other tools already. So let me share some of those with you. Um, one of the key things here, too, is that your clients are people, right? This is the key reason that we created the key client photo on the home tab of a case. We think it's really important that every time you open up a case, you see that client's face. Maybe it's their driver's license photo. Maybe you ask them to send a selfie so that we know who we're talking to every single time. But it's really important to remind your staff, with PI being so difficult of a practice area, emotionally, a lot of it's easy to get jaded in PI. I know, I used to do it. Um, and instead, every time you're opening up that case and you can see who you're fighting for, it changes the way that you approach speaking to that client or fighting on their behalf. I'm a big believer in that. Um, we also have a critical case note here. So, for example, here on Anita's case, client prefers text. Best time to communicate is after three. Um, you know, her cat's name is Fluffy. Whatever that might be, breaking down those barriers, whether you're talking to your, whether that client calls in and he or she's able to speak to their typical attorney or their usual case assistant. If not, we still want them to be able to reach anyone at your firm. Anyone at the firm can pick up and open their case and relate and speak to that client like they are your only client. It's very important. And when we're talking about client communication, it's also really important to make sure that you're talking to those clients. As you saw in the previous slide, we have client communication uh, client communication dates captured on every single key report where uh, that would be relevant, and you can filter on that. So this screenshot we grabbed from the My Cases report that anyone working cases in Case Bear can pull up a My Cases report with all of their cases, and they can go in and filter on that client communication date or the last touch date, which is like working the file. You opened a case, you worked on it. Both of those, if you're tracking those in your firm, and tracking, you know, how, what percentage of cases everyone's touching in the last week, in the last month that they're responsible for can really transform the client experience. So now I want to veer into texting a little bit. As you guys saw on one of the earlier screens when we started talking about client experience, there's a lot of things that we can do with text. You can text an intake form. You can text a CFA or contract. You can obviously text with your client back and forth. The photos save automatically to a case. I know I don't need to tell any of you how important texting is, but you'd be surprised how many firms still to this day aren't texting in your, with their clients. And I also want to flag, it's free. So if you're here as a case for your customer, you're not texting and utilizing our texting feature, go and activate it in your account with the help of the firm owner or office administrator because it is going to be a game changer for your practice. Sometimes people are afraid to activate it because they're worried about permissions. Casebeer has so many permission layers to ensure that the right people are texting with your clients. So I want to give you peace of mind with that. Um, and let's talk about why it's so important, right? 81% of Americans text regularly. I I'm surprised it's not higher than that, to be honest, right? But the average American texts twice as much as they call. And my favorite statistic is that 90% of those text messages are read within three minutes of being received. And there's no way that your client email responses are anywhere near close to that. 45% um, of texts get a response. That's huge. Um, and the average response time is about 90 seconds, as you can see on the screen. Um, sometimes people think it's just young people 
which to be fair, your client base gradually are people that had cell phones in high school, right? Thankfully, I eked out before that was the case, but you know, that's the norm now. It's a huge amount of your clients. And but people between the ages of 50 and 69, text messaging has taken over email as the communication tool most used to stay connected. So again, reminder, it's free with your Case Beer account. There's no reason not to be using it. It is a game changer. So that takes me to number five, automation. There's so many different automation functionalities that we have in Case Beer to streamline your practice. So whether it's from intake or settlement or closing out a case, we want to make sure that you have the workflows built in uh, to be more efficient and effective as a firm, right? You can trigger tasks with case status changes. That's using Case Beer case plans. You can assign it to specific people working on a case. And uh, you can use litigation event plans. Uh, you can uh, create deadlines from key dates, mark certain tasks as urgent, and of course, monitor task completion. So specifically regarding case plan and automating tasks, why is that so important? You know, a lot of firms will get started with case fear, or maybe you're with a software that has task automation now and everyone kind of works a little bit differently. Ours is very status-based, which is very important, I believe. But it's important because you want to create a, uh, so sometimes people get started, excuse me, and they don't take the time to build in some of this on the front end. And I think that's a missed opportunity to really scale your firm and help deliver a consistent experience for your clients. It's easier to train new employees. Instead of someone sitting and shadowing another case assistant or paralegal or attorney for a couple of days, now they can just sit at their desk and get assigned work. And as those cases that they're assigned to move through the pipeline, those tasks just start popping up and they know exactly what they're expected to do. It also helps create accountability on key steps, right? Um, a lot of attorneys I speak to say, gosh, I really just want to make sure that we're checking everything off on an intake, that we're requesting photos, that we're ordering that police report on time. And Yes, someone can check off a task and say they did it and still not do it. But now you know that you have a problem with somebody as opposed to just it not getting done. And they were able to say, oh, I forgot. Right. No, if someone goes in and checks off something that they did it and they didn't. First of all, you fire that person and find someone else great to do the job right. Right. Um, and it is, it simply is essential for scaling and growing your firm and working efficiently. So let's talk a little bit about litigation event plans. Um, so although Case Spirit, we have integrations that provide rules-based calendaring, we have found that a lot of law firms also prefer to have control over what appears on their calendar when. And so they like to harness Case Spirit's litigation event plans which allows you to build out your own litigation events, your deadlines and reminders, however you like, right? So you can create a plan and you can add a trigger event like a trial date or add rules from there. Um, and Case Beer has all kinds of options for calculating types of days or what to do about weekends or holidays. And you can also set who on the case should be assigned to key events, which is a really big uh, piece component of that. And so uh, when you go to activate a litigation plan, you can do so from a client's case and it'll automatically generate the calendar events for attorneys and paralegals. Looks like we maybe have some questions coming in, so go ahead and jump in. Um, but when we talk about uh, when we talk about automation and events and things like that, I always like to talk about whether a firm is proactive or reactive. So most law firms are reactive, right? A client calls, you're looking up, oh, yes, yeah, let's, let's get on that. Let's make sure we do that. Or just, you know, whatever it might be, you're always so busy that sometimes you're not thinking 
three steps ahead. And with CaseSphere, that's how we really want you to be managing your cases and your clients. We really want you to be anticipating their needs and anticipating what needs to happen on the case. Um, a reactive work culture, you probably all know, it's pretty high stress, it's high turnover. You know, law firms are known to be stressful places to work. Um, and it also increases the possibility of error. So the more that you can anticipate things with built-in case plans, automated tasks, um, harnessing litigation event plans, other automations, which I'm gonna touch on in a second, it's better for your work culture of your firm, means less mistakes happen, and it means that you're gonna stay on top of your cases. We had a question about calendar. We did roll out a big calendar update a couple weeks back. And yes, I think everything has been addressed. There may be one or two things. Um, it, depending on what may have affected you, go ahead and check with our uh, client success team and they'll give you an update on that. All right, so let's talk about Zapier. This is one of my favorite things. We rolled out a Zapier integration last year. We've got some very exciting updates coming to the Zapier integration shortly. So keep an eye out for those if you're already a fan. But essentially Zapier talks about itself as being easy automation for busy people. And in addition to some of the amazing integrations that we have built into KSphere, uh, and which can be managed through your administration, you, we also have this integration with Zapier that allows you to connect KSphere with a lot of your other apps. So without any coding, right? It does require like going into Zapier, building out some automation flows, but um, it is an ecosystem of apps that's always growing and it can give you a lot of different options. I'm gonna highlight a couple favorite things that, um, that people use Zapier for with KSphere. So first off, uh, they will use Zapier to um, trigger emails, like events based off of KSphere case status updates, right? So maybe you will update a status from treating to pending demand. And through Zapier, you could connect it to MailChimp or Constant Contact and send an email notification to that client describing to them, hey, your case now is in pending demand. Here's what happens. Here's what this means. Contact us with any questions. And it's a really nice touch to be able to, uh, to, manage, uh, to manage and inform your clients. OK, maybe you're going to send a new prospective client that comes in via intake information about your firm or you could send them uh, an email to someone on your team when a client uh, texts um, or you could send an alert to your intake attorneys when a new lead comes in. Now, another way to do this is tracking leads and connecting with them quickly, right? So, for example, if you have leads coming in through Facebook forms or a Gravity form on your website, we have some native integrations that are helpful for that as well for tools that are specifically in the legal space. But other than that, you can also drive leads into KSphere with Zapier. And the options are limitless. I know there's a lot of different ways that firms right now are grabbing leads. And one of the other ways that people are leveraging Zapier is connecting it um, connect to messaging apps. And so this might be more internal notifications, like maybe there's a um, <clears throat> message sent to incoming text Slack channel uh, if a new client text comes in, which you can get sent by email. Zapier can see that email and then trigger that text. Uh, maybe you want to send your accountant a message when the case status is changed to disbursement, for example. Lots of law firms have accountants that aren't in case beer every day logging in. So that's a really good way too to notify them of things like that. And uh, in terms of chat, Zapier connects to Slack, Microsoft Teams, Google Chat, even Discord, which may not be as used often with law firms, but uh, the options again with Zapier are huge. Um, so with that, those are the five features. I do want to give a shout out to all of our other amazing integrations. I know we have Thomas here from Multus Medical in the webinar as well. He, I really encourage you to check Multus Medical out. It's phenomenal technology that creates beautiful surgery and MRI animations that can really transform the negotiation process 
in pre-litigation and then of course in litigation as well. So if you've never heard of Multis Medical, really encourage you to, uh, to check them out. And when we're talking about high value cases, which we talked about before, the beauty is if you activate that integration in your administration settings, it will actually identify cases where Multis Medical could be used because they've had surgery or an MRI, anything like that, um, and send that information right over to them. So we make it really easy for you to request those animations. So check that out. Um, all right. Well, everyone, um, thank you so much for joining me today. I see we've got some questions and even feedback coming in from clients, which I love. I will pass all that down um, to our team and we'll make sure we look at that. One of the things about Casepeer, which many of you know, if you are current customers, we love feedback. Um, we're constantly evolving and developing the software and improving it every day based on uh, based on ideas that you have and based on the needs that change and evolve in the PI space. So thank you again for joining us. Reach out anytime if you're new to Casebeer or uh, or don't know about Casebeer, would like to learn more, visit us uh, online and book a demo. We're, uh, we're very happy to walk you through it and answer any questions that you may have. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day.